Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. I want to welcome all of our new subscribers. We've actually added over 50 subscribers since our last episode on using layer fill versus layer opacity inside of Photoshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at white balance, specifically the advantages of using raw files over JPEG images. If you want the full story, be sure to check out the article I posted at ajwood.com slash raw versus JPEG. Let's go ahead and jump in. You can see on the screen in front of you that I have an image shot by my good friend John Hayes and I've intentionally set the white balance setting to tungsten. Now if you look a little closer, I want you to see that the image that's on the left is the original RAW file and the one that's showing up in the right hand side of your screen is actually a processed JPEG version of the same image. Notice that they look identical. Let's bring these into the develop module inside of Lightroom. If I bring this into develop, what I want you to notice first is when we go to process the RAW image, as it pertains to white balance, I have all of the settings that were available to me in camera. So I could choose to set this as daylight fluorescent, I could choose to auto process it with Lightroom or just actually return it to as I shot it on site. If we adjust the color temperature, I can see that measured in degrees Kelvin. So I can make it a warmer photo. I can make it a cooler photo. I can also grab the white balance eyedropper and actually click in the image to try and auto process the white balance. For comparing this to the JPEG image, I'm just going to set the white balance to auto and let Lightroom process the white balance. I'm going to flip over to the JPEG file. And if we take a look at processing the white balance to the JPEG image, the first apparent difference is how the pull down list shows up. You can see my presets now no longer show the settings from the camera. They actually just show me simply as I shot it, which is tungsten. I could do an auto process via Lightroom or I can custom. Now if I try to adjust the temperature slider this time, I get a plus or a minus 100. I'm no longer measuring the color temperature in degrees Kelvin. I can still use my white balance eyedropper and try to auto process it. And again, for comparison purposes, I'm just going to set this to auto. So I'm going to let Lightroom process both the RAW and the JPEG image and try and auto white balance. I'm going to bring this back into the compare module inside of the library module. And if we look at the comparison view, what I want you to see is clearly as I zoom in even greater, clearly there's a blue fringe, there's a blue tint, there's a blue outline that shows up in the JPEG image. So even though Lightroom auto processed it, we still have some fringing. The raw image clearly distinctly is better. So if you want the most creative license as a designer, certainly RAW has an advantage. But if you're trying to correct an image, one that you mistakenly set up with the wrong white balance, you're going to get a cleaner, better result if you use a RAW file. Now what happens if you don't have Lightroom? As designers, you're working in Photoshop, what are you supposed to do? Well, let's take a look at the screen. I'm going to bring up Photoshop. And what you would do is actually open Adobe Bridge and then use Camera Raw. For those of you that don't know where Bridge or Camera Raw are installed, simply inside of Photoshop, go to the File menu and choose Browse in Bridge. If I grab Browse in Bridge, I can grab that same image, double click on it because it's a raw file, or better yet, if it was a JPEG image, I could right click and say Open in Camera Raw. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And when I bring this file up, I want you to see, in terms of adjusting the white balance, once again, I can choose the tungsten setting if I really wanted that blue color cast. But again, to remove it, I have all of the settings I had in camera. So here's my daylight. Here's my ability to adjust the color temperature in degrees Kelvin. Here's my ability to just say, you know what? Go ahead and auto process that. So I'll go ahead and I'll click Done. This has been another episode of Photoshop Lightroom, your Tip Tuesday. 
I'm AJ Wood. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Please take an opportunity to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Be sure to check out my blog or come and see us for training at MediaCats. Appreciate your time. Have a great day.